Good morning. Happy Saturday. Happy 9 a.m. Saturday morning thrift haul time. Y'all, my name is Brie, owner and artist of Upcycled by Brie, and we are here with a very cute thrift haul. Not a ton of items today, but I want to paint. It has been a couple weeks since we have painted live, and I am dying to do some DIYs today. Please do pardon my face. My allergies are totally kicking my tail, but we're going to get through it, okay? So pardon me if I'm a little sniffly. I started my Zyrtec last night, so hopefully by next week it'll be all better. But items are live in the boutique already, upcycledbybree.com, shop the haul collection. So if you see something you love, hurry, run over to the website, check out, and then come back and hang out with us. And pst, little secret, pop-up sale today. 30% off thrifting and upcycled finds until 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. And y'all are the first to know. I haven't made a post. I haven't sent an email. Y'all that came to hang out with me at 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning and remembered our new time, y'all get first dip. So 30% off. I have dropped the link to the collection in the chat and in the description box. I am live on Facebook and YouTube. So I will try to keep everybody's comments clear and questions organized. As you hop on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And I swear, like, this one eyeball is, like, barely open. But it's okay. I mowed my grass, like, three or four days ago. And it was I think it was Wednesday. And ever since then, it's been... Good morning, Becky. Good morning, Dee. I made myself another cup of coffee because I had my first one at, like, 4.30. Okay, I did some fun shopping this week. I did a lot of random. The bins weren't great. I did go again yesterday, but that stuff hasn't even been processed. I need to clear out some inventory, hence the sale, um, before I move in new stuff. And I have a bunch of stuff that I want to paint. So I said, you know what? Let's hold off on that. Let's load up some larger, really fun items and do some painting. But I did find this in the bins yesterday. I love when I can find a coffee tin, especially for inexpensive. I've been seeing these are upwards. They're getting up there. Let's just say that, especially when they have the lid. Love that it still had the lid on it. The Mountain Grown Coffee Drip. Um, nice and rusty and crusty on the bottom. I haven't attempted to get the lid off. Arr! Never goes very well on a live stream, so I think we're going to leave it on. <laughs> $19, $19.95 up on the website minus the 30%. And I pay about an average of a dollar or so per item at the bins, kind of depending on the day. But that is definitely a good one. And it's going to be perfect in the 4th of July vignette. You can even create an even smaller display on the top since it's got the lid. Super happy to find that. I also found this gorgeous rusty crusty tool tray in the bins. Um, it was not over the weight, so I paid by the pound. Um, if y'all don't know what the bins are, it is an outlet, a, a thrifting outlet. This is where all of the items go. When they don't sell a Goodwill, they send them all to the outlet. They throw them all in these big old bins, and you shop and dig through for treasures, and you pay by the pound. A lot of you probably know by now, but I still get a few questions. Um, I hunted for the actual toolbox to this to no avail, but I did go ahead and pick up the rusty crusty tray. These are great for organizing things if you're a crafter. They're also fun to add little feet to and you can make beautiful centerpieces, um, put some florals, some greeneries in there and you're ready to go. Well, good morning, Miss Maisie. What are we doing? Did you wake up when I started talking to my friends? Say hello, everybody. I think it's been a while since she's made an appearance on here. Say she comes on to a lot of my whatnot sales. She probably needs to go potty. Pardon me for two seconds. All right, come on, hurry up. Hurry up. I was talking to my friends. All right, go potty. <laughs> Good morning, Suzanne. Yahoo, Suzanne's heading out to thrift and antique. I love that for you. I love that for you. I can't wait to see what you get. Um, I also found this cute little black enamel cup in the bins yesterday. It does have one little spot here of patina, which we absolutely love. And I like to put succulents, a nice pop of green inside of the black enamel. It looks so good. I also love the nice little sharp angle on the handle here. It's just the details. $10.95 on the cup. I paid, you know, around a dollar, but technically by weight, that paid a lot, or that weighed a lot less. I just kind of... Um, average out the number of items I got from the bins, divide it by my total or whatever. 
average my price out that way. It's just easier. I stopped by a random garage sale yesterday. There's actually a couple happening now um, and found this cloche, a little cheese cloche with the wood base. Now it does look like water damage. I'm assuming somebody probably put it in the dishwasher, like a silly, silly Billy. Um, what I'm going to do though, it's a read description item. I'm going to fill that with just a little wood filler. It's a teeniest, tiniest start of a crack. And then I'm going to give this a beautiful chippy paint job. I'll use Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, which is food safe in case you still want to use it for a little cookies or something. Um, and it is $29.95. How rude. I thought I put that on Do Not Disturb. Jeez Louise. And it will be beautiful. I might even decide to stage it up um, and put a few things under it. We shall see. They're fun to stage. Oh, and then I found a gorgeous stack of old books in the bins yesterday. Now, they were like a, a set of college fictional. Don't be mad at me, but I did rip the covers off of them. Don't be mad. It wasn't a whole set. I looked them up. Don't yell. Okay, sometimes you have to sacrifice in the name of crafting because the front and back cover on them are completely blank, which makes for great decor books and the spines are fabulous. So I did go ahead and deconstruct them a little bit. I've added on some beautiful lace and a little touch of rusty wire. I like the contrast of the, you know, soft and feminine and then the kind of like you know, rusty masculine and a touch of lavender. Love a good shabby book there. I think I have like six or seven available, $14.95. Um, and I am Suzanne. I was just about to say, did you see that? But then you said you were going shopping. So I didn't want to pressure you. <laughs> um, and I pay, I think it's, it's a dollar a book at the Goodwill bins. Correct me if I'm wrong. It might be less than that. Um, yes. Yeah, so if you're just hopping on, y'all are the first to know. Pop-up sale today, 30% off upcycled and thrifted finds on my website. There is a link in the description box and in the chat. I haven't told anybody yet. I haven't made a post. I haven't sent out an email. Since y'all remembered to come hang out at 9 a.m., you're the first to know. Okay, Maisie's bugging me for her treat. Let me get that, and then we'll be done with interruptions. She just got a little piece of real bacon. Hot dog. <laughs> Good morning, Stephanie. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. I found this cutie wall decor bicycle. These are so fun in the springtime. This one is also a great size. You could even add it onto a wreath or a door hanger if you've got kind of like a larger front door area. It does have the two little hanging hooks on the back of it. And of course, it's just, it's half a bicycle. <laughs> that way it lays flush against the wall. It would be cute to add a little bit of like lace or a floral to this, or maybe like the tiniest little basket to the front. How cute would that be? Good morning, Cynthia. I am so excited for you and your new journey. Oh man, $22.95 on the bicycle. Um, I picked this out of the Goodwill bins as well. This cute little wall hanger came from the garage sale yesterday. I paid a dollar. It's up at $12.95. Love the combination of the wood and the metal. And the floral was already popped in there. So I decided, you know what? Y'all can have a little bit of floral too. I know a lot of us are still working on decluttering, spring cleaning. So it's always nice to have a couple little extra totes around. Um, little wall pockets where you can pop your mail, your keys, or et cetera. And also Mother's Day is coming up. So we have plenty of time. We have plenty of time to order gifts and get them shipped away. If you have a mom that loves like a book, you could easily slide like a little book and bookmark, um, something like that inside and gift this way. I always love giving gifts inside of cute containers rather than gift bags. Oh, what's everybody up to today? I, I'm going to have a paint-a-thon. I want to film some YouTube videos, some projects for some YouTube videos. I want to paint. I want to finish my haul tree. We're staying home and we're painting up a storm today. It's going to be nice and it's going to be sunny. I'll have good lighting. I can't wait. 
I found two um, sets of wood and brass salt and pepper shakers. That was a mouthful. At Thrift World this week, uh, I did sell one pair on Whatnot, and then I saved one pair for the thrift haul. Love the combination of the brass and the wood on these. Uh, $22.95, and I did pay $3 on the set. They are Masco Made in Japan Vintage Salt and Pepper. Um, a beautiful, beautiful set here. I think Suzanne, Suzanne grabbed my other set off of whatnot. Good morning, Lisa, from a snowy Colorado. Oh, boo. I was just telling everybody how nice and sunny and pretty it was here today. I wonder what the weather is going to be like. It's been a little cooler. I need to know. Let me check. Pardon me. 57. 57. Tomorrow's 62. And then we warm back up to the 70s. Woohoo! I'm like high 70s next week. I'm excited. I found a runner in the bins, a pretty little doily runner. Is it, it's a crocheted, I should know this by now. Is, is a doily crocheted, is that the right term? 1995, I paid around a dollar. And this is a long one too. I have the length and, um, you know, with the most items in the description box of all the listings on my website. I think this one was 36 inches long, if I do recall. It's a long one. Very pretty design in it. Somebody tell me. It's crocheted, right? No? Yes? <sighs> Listen, I just like to sell the pretty linens. <laughs> uh. I found a natural wreath in the bins yesterday and usually these little boxwood dried florals get very very broken up Yahoo! suzanne just picked up the coffee tin nice <laughs> nice oh and d's been in the low 90s in arizona correct not new mexico arizona yes crochet or tatty thank you stephanie thank you I always say it so confidently, and then I second guess myself. Um, but these are usually all broken up and busted into a million pieces when they're in the bins. Usually they're topiaries that I find that are destroyed. But this is a gorgeous little dried greenery wreath. So, of course, I snagged it up. Nice and sturdy, very well made. I have it up in 1995, and I paid around a dollar for it. Good green color too. And then now I have been sitting here looking at this combination of green and black and totally second guessing what I had planned for summer decor. Yes, Arizona. <laughs> uh, so I've been decorating with lots of dry lemons lately. Lemons here, I'll show you guys. My lemons and my stoneware. And I'm like obsessed with this very natural, um, oh, careful Brie, very natural dried floral and fruit right now. And then the, the stoneware I've always been obsessed with. So I was thinking this was going to be kind of my color co uh, palette for summer. And then the black and the green comes along. And now I just don't know what to do. This little cute lunchbox has the star detail on the side. I love that. $22.95. Good morning, Lacey. How are you? <coughs> I'm dying of allergies this morning, so pardon me. Patented, a bunch of numbers, patent pending is all it says on the side. But I love that star detail. Super cute in a 4th of July vignette. You could open this up and fill it with like some red and white and blue spindles or some kitchen masher tools, red and, and white chippy mashing tools. Love the pop of gold on the inside. Um, and I have two of these already on my hutch. I actually bought this one for myself. I don't have room for it. So we're going to pass that one on to a friend. Those lunch boxes bring up a lot of memories for people. They're always a popular seller for me. 
on our way to get parts for the hay roller. Woohoo! Very nice, Lacey. I'm going to, um, I don't have a very large haul. I was telling everybody today, I'm running a little sale, a little pop-up sale on my website. Y'all are the first to know. So if you want to do some shopping, upcyclebibrary.com, links in the, in the chat, 30% off until midnight. <laughs> Um, but also I want to do a ton of painting today. I am like dying to do some painting projects and I have plenty to paint. I have plenty to paint. Okay. I had a request to start finding it's the season chippy, rusty, crusty toolboxes. And I skeet skirted into a garage sale the other day and I'm glad I did. I found one and it is good. It is the perfect green. It is chipping back to black. I have it up 79.95, I think. I don't know, where's my sticker? The sticker didn't stick to it because of the chippy paint. <laughs> we can look, let's look. The lady looked at me like I was crazy. The pile that I made from her garage sale. It was a bunch of tools and stuff. And she asked me what I did. And I, oh, 99, I'm sorry, 99.95, but 30% off today. Today only. I paid $10 on it. And she asked me what I did. And I told her I, I sold home decor. <laughs> and she looked at my pile. I was like, and I, I mean, I sell this stuff like as home decor. She just kind of looked at me and I was, how much do you want for all of it? <laughs> I know the green and black is so good. It's so good. This is, I really wanted to keep this. Ugh, but the people want it. The people want it. And it's my job. Everybody always asks me, they're like, why don't you keep stuff for yourself? I'm like, you know, this is my job. If I kept everything, I would be out the job. Ooh, somebody just picked up that antique box too. Was it Lisa? It was Lisa. Nice job, Lisa. I grabbed that in Greenwood, Missouri, Lisa. Yes, scroll back a couple pages in that Shop the Hall collection if you're going to utilize the sale today because there's still some good stuff left from the last couple of weeks. I found that, yes, Lacey said the toolbox with flowers in it, girl. You open that up and you put some like white peonies, just the biggest, fluffiest, beautiful white flowers you can find popping out of there. It'd be so good. <laughs> At least I do. Lisa's back. Um I found this guy in the Goodwill bins yesterday. I love him so much. He's made out of a nice wood. I don't know what kind of wood it is, but it is nice and thick. $29.95. I paid around a dollar for him. And he's been used. He's been loved. You could recondition and use him all you want. Or I was thinking he'd be great with a chippy paint job too. <laughs> Ducks have been selling for me again. I think ducks are going to make a comeback, you guys. I do. Found this cute little metal basket. It is not old, but you know what? We throw it outside for a, a rainy spring season and then hoard it for like 10 years. And this is going to be a really good vintage rusty, rusty basket. $10.95 on this guy. I paid a dollar for it. Ish at the Goodwill bins. Good morning, Teresa. Don't worry. I know it doesn't look like there's much behind me, but we're going to paint this morning. We're going to paint. I didn't feel like listing a bunch of stuff this morning. I felt like I wanted to paint with you guys and then do a bunch of painting projects today. I'm going to um, edit up some videos. My YouTube is like right now. We got to fix this. We got to fix it. I found this gorgeous box at the garage sale yesterday, $1.50 price tag on it. And I love how it has this whitewashed effect on it already. And then the metal galvanized handles, super unique, kind of like this twisted metal look. This is also a read description item, $22.95. And I am going to be adding a stencil to the front of it. Uh, something fun, something farmhouse, a little bit of words. I'm thinking white, just keep it nice and fresh. Nice and fresh. That'll go into today's to work on pile. I found this beauty at Thrift World. I am obsessed with the shape, with the size, and the color on it. Um, 
It looks like an apple basket to me, like a bushel basket, but it has a hinged lid. And oh my gosh, the patina around those hinges, is, it's just a good color. I was thinking about stenciling this one and then I decided, no, it's too pretty. Pretty clean on the inside, little dusty. Don't worry, dust is free. Sorry if you have headphones in. Dust is free. That's what I get for trying to be funny. And I have it up at $54.95. I did pay 15 on this one. I paid up for it, but I was just absolutely obsessed. We saved it. If I would have dropped it just now, it probably would have broke. Everybody's awake now. Woo. Okay, I found this very unique shelf. First of all, first of all, I can't figure out if it goes this way or this way. I, I think this way. I think this way. But then if it goes this way, why would there be holes? I was thinking these were holes for hooks, which would make more sense this way, but it wouldn't make sense with hooks this way. So maybe those are just holes to mount it to the wall. <laughs> Nonetheless, I thought it was a very pretty towel rack holder, um, or it's big enough. You could also hang a blanket off of this or copper pans or paintbrushes, lots of options. There's enough space between the dowel rod and um, like the base of the, the frame. <laughs> Words are hard this morning. <laughs> that you could hang lots of things, right? If this was in a whole bunch closer, it would be hard to hang. You could also like use this for an herb drying rack. I just loved it. I love the shape up here. I love the carved leaf detail. And I think it would actually look really good with a paint job to kind of bring out some of that detail. It was in the Goodwill bins. I couldn't let it go to the dump. So I did snag it up and it is $22.95. An amazing starter for macrame, says Lacey. Lacey is my farmhemian gal. She loves farmhouse, but she also loves boho and does like a lot of macrame work. It would be, it would be like a frame for your macrame. Mm. Mm, girl, I wish I did. I don't know how to macrame. That's the problem. Somebody else needs to buy it and do it. <clears throat> Lacey, and show us all. <laughs> Another Goodwill bin save. This adorable little MCM boho-y shelf. These are so great for like smaller bathrooms. You can put your little face lotions and stuff on them. I actually had one in my smaller house and I had it painted in bohemian blue. It was so pretty. I don't even know whatever happened to that. I think I ended up selling it. Um, but these are really great for little succulents and things as well. It's got a little love up here by the nail holes. Um, a little hemp oil would help that blend right in. But of course, this is a little handmade piece and is old so you're gonna have that here and there 22.95 on this guy as well this beauty came from my secret source lady in Topeka and it is a gorgeous antique mirror frame from a dresser also would look great with some paint, but I love the dark wood color on it. And I love all of the crackle there in the finish. Um, the mirror does swivel. The mirror frame does swivel. It does appear to be a little rusty where the hinges are. Um, so I would, I'm not gonna force it, but I think with a little WD-40 or something that would probably swivel a little bit better and then it still has all these little wood pieces that help hold the mirror in but obviously there is no mirror there it would need to be cut you could also hang this on the wall as is put a piece of art on the inside um or put it up on your mantle same situation there put a little art on the inside of course chicken wire and you could hang things like old photographs lots and lots of options these are um, very, very tricky to ship, but I do want to make sure that they, they you know, get saved over time. $2.29 on this guy, and it can be yours. Otherwise, until then, I think it is going to sit in my bedroom on <laughs> my beautiful old cabinet. Did I just go cross-eyed looking at that? Oh, geez. Don't rewind it and screenshot it. Don't do it. 
All right, last, oh, there's a couple more things over here. I found these organizers in the bins yesterday. I love them. Very, very industrial with their little faux screws on there. I do have two available. They are sold individually, $14.95 each, and I paid about a buck. Oh, Paula says to turn the uh, mirror upside down and use it as a shelf. Now I have to try. Now I have to try it, Paula. Oh, very interesting. You could even, you could take this part out, use that as a frame and use the other pieces of the shelf. That would be gorgeous, Paula. Y'all are so smart. It would be very easy to take apart as well and put back together if you wanted to down the road. Mm, well, if that disappears later off the website, y'all know why. <laughs> All right, last bins save of the week is this huge, gorgeous metal suitcase. Yes, it is metal. Rusty, crusty. Um, the inside has a little bit of wear and tear. It doesn't like super stink or anything, but I would say decor use only on this guy. There are some pictures of the inside up on the website. Beautiful, rusty, crusty hardware on here. And still some stickers from when they traveled back in the idea, or back in the idea. Sorry, I'm reading comments. Back in the day. <laughs> oh, geez. Words are real hard. Yeah, I'm going to shut my mouth and just paint today, I think. But everywhere where it got all beat up and scuffed up, it got some really good rust. Um, I sold one a while back to, to Miss Marty. And I think the other one would look beautiful stacked on top of this one, Marty. I'm just saying. Just saying. Whew, gosh, that's a workout. Y'all had heavy things today. $89.95 on the suitcase. Okay, so today we are going to paint some artichoke bookends, and it's funny because Miss Terry just bought them, so hopefully she's on here watching. Terry, are you here? I haven't seen you comment yet. When Patricia picked up the salt and pepper shakers, very, very nice. Love it. Um, but I want to paint these artichoke bookends. I had these a couple of weeks ago, I think is when I showed them in my thrift haul. And I have in the description that I'm going to paint them to look like cast iron. And I have done this technique several times in the past. I think I've got an edited video up on it. Um, but my friend Sammy, Unicorn Dust Designs, did it a couple weeks ago and tagged me. And I kind of had forgotten about it. So I was like, you know what? That sounds like a good time. Let's recreate the look. It's a super easy... Um, and high-end looking paint job. So we're going to be using DIY paint today. Uh, if you're new around here, you know I've got a lot of new followers. DIY paint is fabulous. It's my favorite paint, hands down. It's a clay-based paint. It's highly pigmented, and it is all natural. So lots of good benefits, um, but it is a nice thick paint too. So between the pigment and the thickness, your coverage is phenomenal. You get really good coverage with a lot with a little bit of paint which makes it very efficient. And y'all, if you've noticed, I moved all of my paintbrushes out from behind me. I'm trying to kind of work on my setup around here for between auctioning and DIYing. And I'm still struggling to find the perfect setup, but we'll, we'll get there. So these are the bookends. They are like a, a kind of a resiny material, but they're super heavy. Don't hate the finish on them. I don't hate it, but it could be better. I'm just kind of meh. <laughs> Terry is here. Yay. So it could be better. So we're going to use DIY Little Black Dress, which is the more true black. There is also DIY Black Velvet, which is kind of like a, um, like a black gray, a really, really, really dark gray. And I've got my DIY perfectionist brush. If you notice here, it has a really great pointy tip on it, which is going to get down in all of those little details fabulously. So we're going to give these just one nice 
thick coat of paint and I think that should be substantial. I might have to do a couple little touch up spots, but. And I am just going to paint one on camera. I'll finish the other one up later. Don't worry, I will paint them both. Dee Dee, honey, I, my haul was only 20 items today. I was telling everybody, good morning, by the way, we are going to paint something and hang out and chat today. But I am, I need to clear out a little bit of inventory. I have a lot of really large items in my inventory right now. So I'm doing a sale today. 30% off. Y'all are the first to know. I haven't made a post yet. I haven't sent out an email yet. I wanted my 9 a.m.ers and the ones who remembered to get here to be the first to know. Um, and I didn't load up a ton of new things because I didn't do a ton of shopping this week. Like the bins kind of sucked this week. I hit a couple garage sales. I did a little thrifting and I have a few more things that I got yesterday. Um, a lot of it needs painted. I'm going to have a painting party day. I'm going to film a couple YouTube videos and my allergies are kicking my butt today. So I didn't want to be like digging through a ton of junk this morning at like 5 a.m. right when I woke up. But anyways, good morning. Hi. You didn't miss too much is what I'm saying. But you know, you know what to do. Go check the website. I have it sorted newest to oldest here in the links. <laughs> How's your weather, Dee Dee? We got a beautiful sunny day here again. I'm excited. It's kind of rainy and crappy the past couple days. And chilly. I've still been selling the heck out of artichokes. They were always a good seller. Um, whether it's just like a, art, like a little artichoke decor finial or bookends. Um, they always sell really well. Or like artichoke art. What about y'all? Thank you so much, Jazz. Jasmine is dropping the links for the paint and the products. I appreciate you, my friend. Look at the coverage we're getting with just one coat of this paint. So good. All right, now I'm paint up the base and then I'm gonna use my heat gun to dry this. A little quicker while we're live, <clears throat> not a necessary step. If you don't have a heat gun, that's okay. You can let your projects dry naturally. You can put them in front of a fan. You can put them in the sunshine. You can use a hair dryer. Um, but if you've got the time to just let it dry on its own, that's usually best. But ain't nobody got time for that. You ain't got time for that. <laughs> you know what I'm excited for? to get my sprayer out. I did, I don't think I sprayed, I didn't last year. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I did not spray anything. Wow. I used to have that thing out every weekend. Isn't it crazy how times change? Crazy. All right. Let me get this dried up a little bit. They're artichokes. They're artichokes, right? <laughs> Stephanie just said, are they artichokes or pineapples? I don't know. Is that a pineapple? Y'all, y'all debate in the chat while I dry this up. <laughs> Maybe it's neither. Now that you say it, I'm totally second guessing myself. <laughs> As I start to dry this, you guys might be able to see this far away, you might not, but the paint will start to lighten up. Um, as you seal your DIY paint, it will get a little dark again, and then it will start to lighten up as it dries again. So keep that in mind if it's the first time using the paint. Kind of freaks people out the first couple times, but no worries. Oh, Paula, thank you. Paula sent me some pictures, inspo pictures of the shelf. Thank you, thank you. Jasmine doesn't know either. Okay, well, thankfully, thankfully Terry liked them. Terry, what do you think? Terry bought them. Do you think they're pineapples or artichokes?
Be careful heat gunning over your paper towel too, you guys. They look like upside down pineapples you find on fence details. <laughs> Tara, he thought artichoke when she purchased. Dee Dee says artichokes. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's funny. They're fancy. They're just really fancy artichokes. They're like artichokes with dresses on or something. <laughs> I also didn't paint the back of it yet, but I will since they're bookends for sure. Don't you worry. Just hitting a couple little spots that I missed as I'm drying it. That's the easiest way for me to do touch ups generally. <laughs> If I'm painting a big piece of furniture, um, I don't usually paint like this, but when I'm painting home decor, it's usually just pretty willy nilly, like slap it on, get it on there. And the paint is such good quality that it's so easy to use. You can really just do that. It's another perk of loving a antique vintage distressed look <laughs> when you're painting it doesn't have to be a pristine perfect clean look i've done a couple of like mcm inspired pieces that is like you know very clean lines very solid color paint no distress that ish is so stressful <laughs> I'm like, give me some chippy paint. Let me sand the corners down. I love me a good half coat. <laughs> but I do love the look of MC and furniture. I do. It's just not my top style. Teresa says they're great, whether they're artichokes or pineapples. <laughs> they're amazing either way. Eh. <laughs> That's funny though. I sold an artichoke here recently to Vicky. She painted it up, I think gypsy green or something. But yeah, you're right. I mean, oh, I wonder, does it make the whole artichoke like when you put it together? No, it even looks less like an artichoke now. It's okay. We're just gonna go with their great regard. <laughs> All right, almost dry here, almost dry. And then also keep in mind when you are heat gunning things and then you're going to use a wax, when your project is warm, the wax is going to melt very quickly. So be careful. Um, I like to let my things cool down for just a couple of minutes before I slap the wax on there. Let's check out that coverage though. Very, very good. I see a couple of tiny little spots of gray peeking through where I just missed it. But not bad. Not bad at all. I took a shower and washed my hair this morning. And I'm not sure why, because I know I'm about to get all kinds of paint in it. <laughs> Good morning, Vicki. I was just talking about you. Were you here before that or were your ears burning? Gypsy green with white wax and a touch of dark, dark wax is what Vicki used on that art. Artichoke. Oh my gosh, y'all. I cannot talk this morning. I even have my coffee. Just a hopeless cause today. All right. There's like two spots on the bottom side that I missed. Let me get those. And then we're going to use DIY black wax over our black paint for an extra rich black finish. Um, you can use clear wax if that's all you have, but I love using either dark wax, which is brown, or black wax over my black paint. Whoa, I almost dropped that too. Boy, is it, uh, is something, is it a full moon? Is uh, Mercury in retrograde is, what's going on today? 
<laughs> Anybody else? All right, let me finish those little spots and then we'll wax. Little black dress is my favorite black for sure. It is mine too. Um, I also carry the Sweet Pickens milk paint line and they have a black called Lantern and it's a really good one as well. Making cool stuff. Good morning, Hiesta. Yes, we are taking these artichoke slash pineapples. We'll call them, we could call them partichokes. Or pineapple for an artichoke, they're partichokes. <laughs> Anyways, and we're taking them from their original finish to a faux cast iron. A pine choke. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, I love you. I love you. I love how everybody was like, it doesn't matter, they're great. Like, thinking maybe I was slightly offended or something. And just so you know, I'm never offended. It, well, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. So everybody's saying they love the dark wax over the black, and I do too. So let's, let's do that. Let's, let's do dark. There's not a huge difference between dark and black. Here's our dark. Here's our black. You can see, you can see just a little bit of a difference even in the, in the camera. Um, the black is black, black, and the dark is just a very dark brown. But I think for our cast iron, it is almost better. I've used both for the effect. Okay, now I need a wax brush. Let me see if I can remember where I hid them from myself. One of these will work. All right, I'm going to use just one of my little chippy brushes. I usually sit here and go like this to them to get the loose bristles out before I use them. But I like to use these because after, you know, four, five, six, ten uses, whatever, you can just throw them away and you don't have to clean wax brushes. All right, let's dig a little bit of brown wax out of our container here. And I just like to put it in the lid to work with it. Makes life easier. Donna, I haven't ordered the new cottage colors yet. It is on my list, but for the third month in a row, I have to take my van in for some kind of repair. Not related to the previous repair. That's just all been completely random. So I have not invested in that line yet, but lots of my friends do. Lots of my friends do have it. I want to get the anvil, the, the black cottage color. Trust me, it is on my next thing to invest in list. Okay. So here's what our paint looks like after it's dry. It dries nice and matte. I absolutely love that about DIY paint. I'm just going to take a little bit of my brown wax here on my chip brush and we're going to go right over that paint. This is going to seal the paint in. You can also use waxes, different color of waxes to give different faux finishes and antique looks. Like I could use a white wax over this black paint. It would give us a really fun, like smoky gray kind of faux finish. Um, you could use the clear wax that would just seal it up, but not really change the color. And the brown is just going to give this more of a warm tone black finish than, uh, than a cool tone black. Okay, so we'll get that sealed up real quick. It's easy peasy. And that's the other thing I love about DIY wax. If you've not used it before, it is so soft and buttery smooth. It's really, really easy to use. Um, I've used other waxes before that were really liquidy and they ran everywhere. And also they will reactivate your paint and it'll all start to wipe off. And then I've used waxes that were not all natural and they smell very strong. Um, all of the DIY products are all natural, which means that if you have young kids and you want to paint with your kids, 
you can let them use these products and you don't need to worry about it. I keep my wa wax brush in a baggie with the wax. Oh, that's smart. That keeps it from getting all dried out and gross. Um, you know, maybe if I invest in, in good wax brushes, that's what I'll do. That's a great idea. Thank you, Annie. My pine of choke is in the shop. <laughs> good, Vicky. I hope your pine of choke sells quickly. It's beautiful. <laughs> Yours actually looks like an artichoke. The, these are slightly questionable. Now that somebody mentioned it, I started looking at them and I was like, oh. So with your wax, um, and you're, if you're going to say like Vicky, she has a booth. If you're going to be taking your items and stuff into a booth or whatever, or they're up for sale, people are going to be touching them. I like to let the wax cure up for 24 hours before I take it in. Um, if you have a piece of furniture, really a week or so, a couple weeks, letting it cure up really well is a good idea. Not everybody has time to do that, but if you do, it's highly recommended. And it takes like a good 30 days for it to 100% fully cure. Once it does, then it's solid. Okay, so now we're waxed. Doesn't look a lot different than it did, right? I'm just gonna take my uh, paper towel here and kind of wipe back any excess wax that might've built up. I'm using a very light touch because again, I did just paint this and then I put my wax right over it. We didn't let it cure, we didn't let it dry. So if I rub too hard, I could possibly rub back that paint. Um, but since it's such a great product, I can, I can, I can trick the system here and I can do it as long as I'm careful. <laughs> if you have the luxury of letting this dry overnight or for a few hours even before you wax it up, that's best practice. Okay, but ow, woo, that's pretty. See, it already looks like cast irony, right? Much more than it did. It kind of muted down some of those details, but now we're gonna go in with some DIY decrepit dust. And sorry, there's like a little wax built up right there. Some DIY dark decrepit dust into the details. And that's what's gonna give us a kind of that like almost rusty cast iron effect. Decrepit dust is a powder form here and it's another like aging, antiquing medium. Looks like dirt. Looks that dirt. And you don't need very much. That is way too much in my brush. Then I'm just gonna grab a little artist brush. I don't like the location of my brushes now, so this is good to know. <laughs> That's okay. I'll get it figured out. Grab a little artist brush here, nothing fancy. And I'm gonna dip it in just the smallest amount of wax, not a lot, just a little bit to help the kind of the dust kind of stick to the brush a little. I'll float most of that wax off onto my paper towel, and then we'll dip until we have a decent amount on our brush. And I'm just gonna work in down in a couple of these little crevices. Low points. Some people don't like that word. <laughs> I'm gonna work in small areas at a time and that way my wax and stuff isn't all drying up a lot before I get to it. I also find that working in small sections lets you pay a little more attention to detail. All right, so I've got it all over the, the pine of choke, right? <laughs> now I'm gonna take my clean paper towel again and I'm just gonna kind of dust it off the, the high points. Dust it off the high points, kind of let it sit down in those low points. And now we have a faux cast iron patina. I'm not going to put the dust like on the whole, whole thing. Cause when you look at a cast iron piece, it doesn't necessarily all have, you know, it doesn't all get rusty. Sometimes just certain points of it, maybe where, um, Maybe where some water would have rained down on these pine chokes if they were outside. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. I keep trying to be so serious about it. And then I'm just going to kind of like dust a little right there, 
like dust a little up here on the top where maybe rain would have gathered. And I know these are bookends. They probably wouldn't have been out in the rain, but a lot of cast iron pieces you see are outdoors. No, I'm saying. Oh, Stephanie says, you just inspired me to use the dust I've had forever. I love this look. Oh, thank you, Steph. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. All right, let me hold it still for you. What do we think? What do we think? If you get to the point where you're like, eh, I don't really love this little glob of dust right here, take your wax brush that has the black, uh, the dark wax, and just kind of dust over that. Br or not dust over, brush over it. And oh, wow, ta-da, it's gone. It's like a magic eraser for your, for your aging mediums. So I didn't really like it right there, kind of smacked in the middle. I like it a little more around the edges. All right, let's do the leaves. Terry likes it. Okay. Phew. It's always nerve wracking when the person who buys your stuff before you paint it watches you paint it live. No pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> oh, goodness. So now, what do you have in your thrifted stash that would look really great faux cast iron? That's the question of the day. Because I think I'm going to paint like three or four things like this. I think I'll make an edited video. I've done an edited video before, but it's been a while. An edited video on this method, I should say. I have lots of edited videos up if you are new here. Um, I also upload videos to Facebook, but I started putting edi edited videos up on YouTube a lot, a lot sooner than I did on Facebook. So I think I have more videos on YouTube probably than I do on Facebook. Lots of different paint techniques, furniture, smalls. I used to have a, a booth in an antique space, so I did staging videos. Oh my gosh, my arm is like dying. Give me one second and I'll hold it up better for you. Oh, I got to switch arms. <laughs> I got to switch arms here. All right, here's this bad boy. Here he is. And now I need to see if I can find a real cast iron piece. I'm like, do I have one around here? I surely I do. But here's our before, here's our after. Didn't hate this, right? Didn't hate this, but kind of meh, kind of bleh, just kind of boring, kind of outdated. This is a lot more classic. All right, let me see real quick. Let me see if I have something cast iron over here. Y'all hang out for just a second. Surely I do somewhere. Way, oh, here we go. This will work. Here we go, here we go. Here's a cast iron trivet. Here's a cast iron trivet that has some good rust patina on it. This technique would be fun on old tools. Yes, it would. And here is our, I feel like my lighting kind of sucks right now too. Hold on, we can do better. I might have just been doing the whole live with a fingerprint on my, <laughs> on my camera there. There we go. I think I was, but it's fine. It's life. Pretty good. <laughs> All right, y'all. Is there any questions about the sale, the thrift haul, any of the paint or products I was using? Miss Jasmine was here in the chat dropping all the links for the products. Um, but I think I'm going to drop the collection for DIY paint one more time, just in case y'all need it. Let me grab that for you. And in this collection, you will find the paint and the wax and the dust. Just drop that in the chat and then let me grab my brush collection for you. If you're catching the replay, you should be able to check links in the chat as well, or always feel free to send me a private message. 
if you're having a hard time finding any links. I am gonna go and get my paint on today, film some videos and nurse these allergies. I hope y'all have an amazing rest of your Saturday. Thanks for hanging out. Go shop the sale, 30% off thrifted and upcycled finds until 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time tonight. And I'm about to go make a Facebook post and tell all of our friends and everybody. So if you want something, go grab it now. And I will see y'all again next Saturday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. We will have another fun thrift haul and we'll do some more painting. So thanks for hanging out and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, friends.